Mansfield, Ohio has been holding down this place on the planet for over 200 years. And these centuries have given us a past that is rich and fascinating and fertile. In fact, the depth of this story is compelling enough to imply that the city has a future as well that could be just as vital and intriguing. We're just a small city on the edge of the American Midwest and are, in many ways, just like any number of other places on the map. But there are facets of our particular intersection of space with time that suggest we are not just like any other town. This unique aspect is something that can be recognized only by looking through time. It can be defined only with a sense of history. There's something about this place that has imbued it with a creative quality of Genesis. Because you'll find that over and over again in our story, different people and different ideas that were born in Mansfield eventually came to impact the nation and to change the world. Let me show you what I'm talking about. It started from the very beginning of our town, when Mansfield was barely even on the map. One of the first people who showed up here in the forest was a man who became an American legend. As John Chapman, he was local folklore. As Johnny Appleseed, he's still known all around the world 200 years later. And he's more than just a page in history books. He's a bona fide American myth, engraved on the national soul as a patron saint, a cultural icon, and a part of who we all are. But his legendary shadow was cast from here, from Mansfield. He spent more time here than anywhere else in his wandering life. The stories they told about him in books all took place here. And when Life magazine wrote about him, they sent their photographer to Mansfield. He's not just our interesting historical character. He helped shape the character of America. Daniel McFarlane Cook had a mind that never stopped turning. And when he was a young man working in a sugar camp, he focused his intellect to understanding the science of unlocking the sources of sugar. He devised a new method to boil sugar sap from maple or sorghum in a large shallow trough. And it worked so remarkably well that once the apparatus was perfected, anyone could see the genius of its design. And Cook's evaporator was in demand from coast to coast. At that point in America, all the sugar came from southern plantations. So when the Civil War cut off that supply, Cook's evaporator made it possible to develop a whole new agriculture of sugar in the North. To this day, he's given credit for revolutionizing the maple syrup industry and the factory complex in the flats on Diamond Street where his evaporator was manufactured became the cornerstone that launched Mansfield's legacy as a manufacturing powerhouse. Frank Nail grew up in Mansfield with a generation of young men who went off to fight the Civil War. And he survived with men who were deeply damaged and haunted by the war. So he produced a play that spoke to the soul of his generation. It was one of the most widely produced and familiar pieces of theater in the 19th century. Millions of people saw it, and many thousands took part in it because the cast was always made up of local veterans from each town while Frank played the main role. In their hometown auditorium, veterans could witness and safely make sense of their story and in the process, experience healing as a group. Frank Nail stepped into his costume 6,400 times on stages all across the US for 40 years. He helped an entire generation of wounded society come to terms with its own healing. Frank Lom was born on South Main Street, and he was born to reach the sky. He became famous at the age of 28 when he represented the United States in an international balloon race. As the very first world's champion balloonist, the entire country embraced him 
as a national sports hero. It earned him the opportunity to become friends with the Wright brothers. And that was how he essentially started the United States Air Force, when he talked Theodore Roosevelt into investing in the Wright brothers' invention. Before LAM, U.S. aviation meant signal balloons, and after him, it meant winged flight. He was a man who changed the world and measurably advanced the limits of what is possible. Mansfield has been proud to honor him with a hometown airport. Kids all around the world know enough to wait till the light changes because of an idea conceived by patrolman Friend Bowles of the Mansfield Police Department, inspired by a book written by our school supervisor, Mildred Roberts. Patrolman Bowles knew he could imprint the fundamentals to help children protect themselves by making safety fun. So he built Safety Town, with kid-sized streets, with stop signs that were only as tall as a six-year-old. He made learning easy as singing a song. The first class in 1937 graduated 40 youngsters. By the next summer, there were 300. Clearly, it is an idea that works because since then, four generations of Mansfield kids have taken pains to make sure their parents make it to Safety Town graduation. From Mansfield, it went all over America. Safety Town is such a perfect, flexible idea. It can be done anywhere. There are Safety Town programs indoors and outdoors in 3,500 communities in the U.S. and in 38 countries outside our borders. Children all around the world are more likely to become adults because of the little stoplight in Mansfield. When Westinghouse came to Mansfield to manufacture appliances, there were enough electrical circuits here to fabricate a mechanical man from spare parts. He was a little crude, but a second generation imagined for the World's Fair turned gizmo science into a more lifelike mechanical man named Willie Vocalite. He was, at the time, no less than a wonder. Writers always dreamed of robots, but it was science fiction until Mansfield. Westinghouse was known for cutting-edge technology, so they used their best parts to prepare an even more futuristic exhibit for the next World's Fair in 1939. Their masterpiece was Electro. He was more human in appearance, with a head of cast aluminum and articulated hands, state-of-the-art wiring, and tubes inside his flashing heart light. Quiet, please. I'm doing the talking. Electro spoke powerfully to a whole generation about possibilities. Our Mansfield boy was a scientific landmark in the ongoing evolution of intelligence on planet Earth. When Louis Bromfield was growing up on Third Street, people knew he was smart, but they had no idea that he would grow up to be a best-selling author and a Pulitzer Prize winner. For a whole generation of Americans, he was the national storyteller, selling millions of novels, and a man who was known all around the world when his books were made into blockbuster movies. Bromfield is special to us, not only because he was born here, but he wrote about here, and he made here his point of contact with the world. Even as a celebrity in Europe, he wrote stories about Mansfield, and then, Having achieved a major voice in the world, at the height of his career, he moved back home. And then he used his influence to speak for the farmers of America. And more importantly, he was a voice for the earth. Millions of farmers must curtail production. Louis Bromfield was a major force in changing the way agriculture impacts the land. And he helped to lay the groundwork for our sustainable future. Each of these people changed the world. 
and there is only one thing they all have in common, and that is Mansfield, Ohio. You may think that because this film is focused on history, that it's all about the past, but it's not. It's about right now. Mansfield is where we start. There's no saying where we go from here.